in FNAF 2 whenever the player gets jump scared, there is a small chance that a minigame would play. One of these minigames, Gift Gifts Give Life, shows the puppet giving gifts to what appears to be the corpses of the missing children. These gifts are later turned into masks, possibly hinting at this minigame being a representation of the puppet in the act of stuffing the bodies inside the animatronics. And thus, after the release of an F2, the most widely held interpretation, and one that I still hold to this day, was that the puppet was the one who stuffed the missing children's bodies in the animatronics, something that would eventually lead to William's demise. But something would later come that would balance the scales of this debate, and that was the release of the Silver Eyes novel in 2016. In this book, William Afton not only murdered the children, but he was also the one responsible for stuffing their bodies inside the animatronic suits. Now, we must remember that the Silver Eyes and its sequels are a separate continuity from the games, but it is very much valid that it would raise questions about who actually stuffed the bodies. Even more so when in the FNAF movie, despite also being a separate continuity, William Afton is once again the one who stuffed the children in the animatronics. And while it is valid to look at these two pieces of media and consider William to be the stuffer of the children in the games as well, I find the logic behind it to be flawed. If the logic train is if William Afton stuffed the bodies in the server ice, and if William Afton stuffed the bodies in the movie, therefore William Afton stuffed the bodies in the games, then you must also accept other identical logic chains as well, right? For example, Michael in the server ice is not William Afton's son, and Michael in the movie isn't either. But in the games, we know for certain that he is an Afton. So copying the earlier train of logic would not work, as it will go like this. If Michael is not Afton's son in the server ice, and Michael is not Afton's son in the movie, therefore he is not an Afton in the games. Which of course is false, and we can do more of these too. Another example would be the way William Afton dies. In the server eyes and in the movie, William gets spring locked and then dragged away by the animatronics. But in the games, William destroys the animatronics and then gets spring locked after facing off against the ghost. But of course, these two pieces of media do not overwrite what actually happened in the games. It's simply a creative choice as part of them being in a separate continuity. The same way many other differences are just creative choices, like who the missing kids are or the location of the restaurant. Therefore, I do not believe we can use the differences between the continuities by themselves as evidence for theories, especially if the games established something different previously. Another piece of evidence that the Will Stuff side likes to bring up is the Hell Wanted level pizza party. If you complete the maze puzzle, you are taken to a backstage area where the glitch trap tells us to join him, at which point we find ourselves inside Freddy Fazbear on stage, looking at glitch trap dancing in the dining room. Now for those unfamiliar with Hell Wanted, this is supposed to be the glitch trap virus trapping the player's soul in the game with it, with the other endings showing other variations of this. Some people have taken this scene as a reenactment of the murder of one of William's victims, followed by the child being stuffed inside Freddy. But I find this argument fallacious, because this is in no way is supposed to be an accurate reenactment. First of all, this scene takes place in the backstage area, but the actual murders took place in the safe room, not backstage. As for William, he was not wearing a normal mascot suit like Glitchtrap does. He was wearing the Spring Bonnie Spring Lock suit, as hinted by the FNAF 3 tapes. As for the stuffing itself, we don't get to see it at all in Pizza Party. We cut straight to us being in Freddy. Now, I do believe Pizza Party is a reference to the after murders, but that's all, just a reference. Otherwise, it would be a very inaccurate reenactment of what actually happened, and therefore it is certainly not a good piece of evidence to show how the murders occurred due to the inaccuracies I just mentioned. We also know that William, when he killed Charlie, he left her body lying where she fell. He had no intention of hiding her corpse, which is why she is not considered part of the missing children, as her body was later found and thus not missing. 
missing, so it would make sense that when William returns to kill him, he would keep to that pattern of leaving the bodies where they fell. Some people claim that William needs to be the one to stuff the bodies, since he is testing how immortality works after he witnesses the puppet be possessed. The issue I have with this is that he never saw the puppet act possessed. He left his crime scene before he could get a chance to see the puppet on top of Charlie's body. And even if he heard it from the news, then what? There is nothing to draw conclusions from. And even if he saw the puppet while he was working at the restaurant after the fact, what would he even notice that would give it away that it is possessed by Charlie? That it started looking at him funny? I doubt it. And I doubt it even more that someone would kill half a dozen kids just because a robot stares at him for too long. We just have no indication that William would know what happened to Charlie's spirit. Now, I want to talk again about the Give Gifts Give Life minigame. Some people in the Will's Tough camp, in an attempt to explain why this minigame is actually not showing the puppet stuffing the bodies, have brought up two interesting propositions. The first one is that Give Gifts Give Life is supposed to represent Happiest Day from FNAF 3, or a failed attempt at happiest day, in other words, an attempt at freeing the souls of the children. The second proposition is that this is a puppet helping the souls connect and possess the animatronics after William already stuffed their bodies inside by using some sort of supernatural powers. Starting off, this cannot be the happiest day from FNAF 3, as every single minigame in FNAF 2 represents things that happened before the gameplay of FNAF 2, but it can't be any form of happiest day anyways, because the minigame itself tells us that we are giving life, not afterlife, not freedom. We are giving life, and you can only give life to something that is not already alive. Which takes us to the second point about connecting the souls to the animatronics. This point can be easily disproved by looking at the other animatronic possessions in the series. Charlie herself did not need another supernatural being in order for her soul to be bound to the puppet. Neither did William for Springtrap, and neither did Elizabeth for Baby. The books have also clearly set up that all you need to possess an animatronic is to suffer a painful death, and then have your corpse exposed to the animatronic in question. So the puppet having supernatural powers that allow her to bind spirits to animatronics is not only completely redundant, but also has never been established anywhere else in the franchise. In addition, these two points seem to completely ignore that the children in the Give Life minigame are not spirits, they are corpses. They are specifically shown slumped over on the floor, just like a corpse would, and how other corpses in the series have been shown. Spirits, on the other hand, are always shown standing up on their two legs, which just adds to the credibility of this being the puppet stuffing the children. Another thing some people have issues with is that if the puppet was the one to stuff the bodies, it would make the puppet an evil character, according to them. But do people forget that the animatronics are not completely logical and benevolent beings to begin with? Like, the puppet tries to kill us, a completely innocent night guard, and so do the other animatronics. Sure, it could be because they think we're William, or that we're in the skeletons in need of being stuffed in a suit, but that just proves my point. The puppet might have the best intentions, despite the actual means not being the most moral Sound. Or you could even say that the puppet was following the animatronic programming of stuffing endoskeletons into animatronics when it stuffed the bodies. Either way or both, it supports puppet stuffed. Also, while the animatronics are programmed to not go inside the safe room, the puppet has no such programming, as we know that it is able to go outside, despite it likely not having the programming to do so. And therefore, it is the only animatronic capable of walking inside the safe room room where the corpses would be. And even the phone guy mentions this. I'll be honest, I never liked that puppet thing. It's always thinking and it can go anywhere. Uh, I don't think the frame mask will fool it, so just don't forget the music box. Finally, the puppet stuffing the bodies inside the animatronics allowed the children to get their revenge by causing William to die a slow and painful death by Springboks, giving the children a chance to set things right. And thus, the character of the puppet, rather than being an empty shell of a character under Will Stuffed, is instead defined by her nature to give life to those who met a similar fate to her, and allow them to bring their killer to justice. 
one was there to lift you up into their arms, the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest, for you, and for those you have carried in your arms. This ends, for all of us, in communication. <laughs>